Dear D. Mellers, thank you very much for the support. I'm so excited that we have just released a beta version, and I here invite you to join me in testing the product. If you find any issues or if you get better suggestions, please feel free to contact us on Twitter and Discord. So, for those of you who are not very familiar with Dmail, Dmail Network is the next generation Web3 email services that integrate the functions of messages communication, asset management, and data storage. So, it starts with email but goes far beyond that. Ultimately, Dmail will become an infrastructure layer tool, a gateway for user conversion. And DID for users to easily experience the Web3 world. It will be a bridge for Web2 users to seamlessly access blockchain services. So step one: login. Currently, we support login with your internet identity, or you can use your plug wallet. But we're also working on integration with MetaMask and Gmail. That we expect will become a reality in Q3 this year. So, for the purpose of this demo, I'm going to log in with my Plug Wallet. And are you ready? Let's jump into it. Actually, this is gonna take a couple of seconds as it's a hundred percent deployed on the blockchain. So you can imagine all the technical stuff going on. If you are here for the first time, you will be reminded to buy an NFT domain account, which is actually your Dmail account, with your principal ID, which is something that's specific to the internet computer ecosystem. So, if you haven't got any NFT domain account, you need to get one at Dmail's official website. But if you already have several, you can just choose any one of them to do the binding thing. Hence the ID initialization. This tells me that there is smart contract calling thing going on in the backstage. It's very specific to blockchain or it's very Web3. So here I'm going to click on binding once again to confirm. I need to click on confirm, and once it's、um, bound, there is no way for you to go backwards. That means there's no way for you to unbind. Again, Canster ID initialization, Web three technologies. This is gonna take a couple of seconds. So let's, as we're waiting for the binding thing to complete, I just want to show you another cool function, which is avatar. You can upload something as your avatar, and I think it's quite cool. You, You can simply upload an N your NFT as your avatar to showcase your identity and to show off. But you should be reminded that the maximum allowable size of the avatar file is 500k. I guess we've completed the binding thing. Well, I received an email in my inbox. Let's take a look at it. From The Dmail team says, "Welcome to Dmail Network." The old Dmailer saying, "Welcome to the wonderland of Web3." Blah blah blah. Best regards. Thank you. Well, this is actually what you will receive if you log in for the first time. And I would like to test out the composing an email function. So first of all, I'm going to write to. Um, Web three address. So here's the trick. There's some sort of differences between writing to a Web three address and writing to a Web two address. If you are writing to a Web three address, you will need to put in the recipient Dmail account or any Web three address. But also you need to type in the principal ID of the recipient. And then I'm going to type in the subject. Hello, Dmail. I need to type in the content. Hello, Dmail. I wish it is as revolutionary as Hello World. And also, you can add attachment here. But the total maximum maximum allowable size of the attachment is three megabytes. But we keep expanding 
the maximum allowable size of the attachment. So I'm going to click on sending. This is going to take a couple of seconds as the technical stuff going on in the backstage. But you see, immediately after I sent out the email, actually I received it. So the communications between two Web3 addresses are really fast. It's like in a flash of a second. And I click on the uh, header of the email and then right on the right side of the screen, the content pops up. Actually, this is something that I personally like very much because I don't have to open web pages after web pages in order to check on different emails. I just click on the header of the email and then the content pops up on the right side. It's very convenient and user friendly. So now I need to write a reply and see how it works. So I'm going to write reply hello Dmail as well. And I'm gonna click on sending. Let's wait for it to process. Oops, this is really fast. You see, in a flash of a second. So after trying the function of writing to a Web3 address, let's now take a look at what will happen if I write to a Web2 address. So here I'm going to type in Web2 address. I don't have to input any PID thing. And I'm going to write the same thing, hello dmail. And I'm going to click on send and see what will happen here. The email has been sent. Well, after you send an email, actually you will be automatically redirected to the send section where you can check on all the emails that you've sent. And here I think I need to point out that your daily allowable limit is 20, which means that you are not allowed to send more than 20 emails per day, but also we keep expanding that um, limit. So let's uh, go back to the compose page once again. See here, here it says that actually it's already at some sort of shortcut. So next time I wanna write to the same address, I just click on here so it's really convenient. And the thing about the differences between writing to a Web3 and Web2 addresses is that with the PID thing, you actually see an extra layer of protection for your privacy and you will be spared from the bombardments of junk mails because Sometimes if you use MetaMask or if you use Web3, Web2 email services, you just have the feeling that you get all kinds of junk mails or unwanted messages all the time. So to some extent, email is like writing to your friend or somebody you know in the Web3 world. And also I would like to show you the drops because you see here I need as I leave this, the current page, and I haven't done anything, so it will automatically remind me to save the email as a dropped. Yes, I am going to save it, because always, this will happen all the time. When you write something, in the midst of writing the email, you will be called on for something emergent, and then you have to leave the uh, you have to leave your screen and you need to deal with that emergency. You want to save it and after that, after everything is settled, you come back and you want to restart where you left off. So that's uh, what how, how you're going to use the drop function. It seems that I've already received the email in my Gmail address. It says, hello, Dmail. That's very cool. I'm going to send a reply. 
hello Gmail as well. Wish you a good day. I'm going to click on send and let's see what will happen. Actually, apart from Gmail, you can also communica communicating with other Web2 email services like ProtonMail, Yahoo, and Outlook. There, are, there won't be any problems writing to or receiving email from all these uh, services. But again, communication with Web2 email services take longer than when you do it with Web3 addresses. That's because we want to protect users' privacy while allowing them to uh, communicate with Web2 services. So we actually have added some extra layers of gateway or agent in order to achieve the purposes. So um, the communication takes longer than if you directly writing to a um, Web3 address. But here is I'm receiving the reply from my Gmail account. It says, wish you a good day, YouTube. See, that's how things work with communicating with Web2 email services. And there's one more thing I want to show you. If you think an email is very important and you want to mark it and put it in a separate category, that's what you are going to do. You're going to tick the box and then you are going to either click on the star here or you can click on the star here to mark it as important and then you will put it in the start category and you can check on it later on. So I guess that's pretty much everything I want to show you on the part of the email services. But there are two uh, additional functions that are really cool I will show you. So here is the assets function and this is an NFT market. For the assets, you can think of it as a wallet where you can store your FT, your fungible token, and NFT assets. For the NFT market, it's like a secondary marketplace where you can actually buy and sell your NFT holdings. Both functions will become live during our next version. And on top of it, actually, we keep expanding our technologies, we keep pushing the boundaries, we keep adding new functions to meet the needs of different users. For example, we will do corporate version soon and we will also launch more customized functions and features in order to meet the diversified needs of our end users. And finally, I just want to say, Internet was born because people wanted to send messages across but actually it drove the thriving development of the internet industry for dozens of years. As a Web3 facing product, Dmail hopes to start with email, but we go far beyond that. We hope to become part of a more diversified ecosystem of blockchain and Web3 services, technologies and products. We hope to be part of it and we look forward to its faster development. So, so much for today's demo. Thank you once again for your attention.